This is Naked by the Future Farm, where entrepreneurship is stripped to its vulnerable core. Brought to you by Vladi Meshkobrestinska and Nectarios Lolios. And remember to subscribe, follow and rate Naked to help us share it with the world. Hi Vladi, how are you? Hi Nick. Um, on the note of uh, our guest Leila, uh, today, today is sort of a um, semi-okay day. It's still a midday. The morning was uh, a little bit more difficult energy-wise, just stuck with many things on a personal front. So, but yeah, it's, it's good to be now settled. I have my ginger tea. Uh, I had my blueberries, so all good. Yeah. What about yourself? I'm fine. Um, I had a I had a tricky day yesterday, quite a difficult day because I was a lot of the grief of losing my parents over the last couple of years washed up because it was a big Greek national holiday and lots of questions around identity, belonging, and and loss came up. Mm. Uh, but the day ended well, and and this morning my. I was having a call uh, and my partner went out for a walk and I said to him, look, if you, if you find some nice pastry, just bring something back. Aww. And he came back with the most amazing feta cheese, fennel seed and honey croissant. Oh, wow. What and a combination. It was just, uh, well, it's just mm-hmm. all the stuff that I like. I like sweet and salty. I like, it was just <laughs> my day. I, nothing can go wrong today because wow. I had this amazing croissant. There you go. And it was connected to Greece. With the fetish. And it was connected and the honey. Oh, and the honey. Ah, I see. So there you yeah, go. That, that doesn't have to be connected to Greece. Come on, we have honey, beautiful honey from so many different places around the world. Don't be too patriotic. I'm not, but there's a lot of dishes in Greek food where we use honey and other people don't. Yeah. I'll yeah, fight well. you on this. <laughs> yeah, I don't have the energy today. <laughs> <laughs> but this is what I loved about Leila. Um, how we, I was, you know, as I was re-listening to it, to the episode, um, I love the, the beginning, um, where she actually thought about how she's doing. And I was like, yeah, you know, so often we just go like into, Hey, how are you? Good, good. Not thinking and no breather, no actual sort of pause. So that's a practice I'm taking. Um, I mean, our listeners now know about my journey with journaling. Mm-hmm. Um, that's but my moment that in the going. day. That's the thing. So I, I, I try to, to do it pretty much every working day. And sometimes there's a clash, uh, with other things, but I've learned to show up without an agenda and just go, but that's the moment of taking a deep breath and going, how are you actually feeling today? And then just writing mm-hmm. stuff that's on your mind. And sometimes it's literally two sentences and that's okay. And sometimes you think it's going to be a couple of sentences and it ends up being a half hour paragraph Mm. and that's okay too. So I've really learned to use this and it does center you this whole, let's just have a quick look inside and go, how are you doing today? Mm. But you're right. Leila was, was, it's interesting how she, she very actively uses it as a tool. Like it's also this very conscious moment of going, if I don't do this, I'll be a little bit out of sync and and that's not a good thing. Yeah, she was so was so self-aware, very self-aware. I mean, I loved how she was um when she shared that she instructed her PA to say, I need somebody to take care of me, you know? And and I was like, Yeah, I know how that feels. Um, but in many other ways, obviously, not just this one. But um I found the conversation really was raw, deep inspiring in many ways Mm -hmm. um educational um not just on the subject of fgm but um i think really also as um these days i'm thinking a lot about systems change both for you know the work we're doing with future farm but also for some of the work in pakistan and and it's inspiring I'm, i'm trying to listen to different really sort of advocates, leaders, entrepreneurs who are behind causes and how they approach it. And um, I was going back to Layla, our conversation with Layla to sort of refresh. And I, was, I found myself actually being so engaged with her own sort of 
way of how she's approaching it and the the sort of learnings um what stand out for you from this conversation compared to the others i think uh, first of all leila is one of those people where you go where do you find the time to do all these things <laughs> yeah. i every time we have somebody on on our show where you go how do you do this right and oh and then i do this and then i do that on top of that and, and it's, it's it's and it's interesting to hear somebody who's who's so active whilst trying to balance their physical and emotional well-being right so um inspiring i think um so th th there's a couple of things first of all it was one of those episodes where s there were moments where i felt quite emotional mm -hmm. uh especially when she was explaining uh fgm when she was talking about uh her own experience but also just because you hear about these things but you're not educated enough there's also an element of being as a man not necessarily able to fully grasp it mm -hmm. but being able at some point i realized also my mind went i know that there's a movement against circumcision with men Mm -hmm. uh, which is also an element of cutting, of course, nowhere near the same ramifications, right? But lots of things in a territory that we didn't really embark to explore, right? So it was learning, lots of learning. Um, the probably the biggest learning uh, that was was quite a feeling that I had very strongly after the conversation was: you can tap into communities of all kind of definitions you'll always find the same the same elements you always find people using their own terminology and their own words to describe the things that we see with a more traditional definition of entrepreneurs um and it was great to have that conversation about how activists are these people by themselves broken broken people yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and we yeah. we never talked about entrepreneurs as being broken It was interesting when she said it, right? And 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 actually, I nodded. I mean, now when that when we were recording, but even today when I was re-listening to the episode, um, I was thinking actually about what you said, um, how you experienced and took in what she was saying as a man. Uh, I think that's an interesting aspect, right? Like how our identities and obviously life experiences and personal past kicks in and influence that sort of um, perspective and how we absorb things. For me, it was, I found it less emotional, but I think I, I give this to the, so it's sort of a credit uh, just because being more aware of the subject. So for me, the power was in the sort of calmness and simplicity, how mm. she talked about it. So I was that that was like intriguing, like the the way how she articulated her thoughts, and really how clean in a way, you know. And my English is not clean, but that's all right. But she, it was really <laughs> that was something that I I found really um, really powerful. Um, but yeah, this angle around people and activists and advocates being the broken people, uh, and that you know the self care comes as uh, something really later in the priority list uh, because we are there to save others and the world, um, that resonates big time. And I see that a lot, obviously, with entrepreneurs, but I have so many friends who are um, leaders of movements, non-governmental organizations, activism of all kinds. And this is, this is the most common sort of a factor that has brought them or is on their journey has been the major struggle for which which is sort of a hindering factor for them to actually be more effective right and it's just because um i think it's this whole also societal industry wider system narrative that you know you need to we, we particularly when you are activist, I always had that sort of notion is that you first need to give to people is like, don't be selfish is that selfishness comes in, kicks in, I think, and the feeling of guilt. So it was awesome. Awesome. That she 
emphasize this. Um, and yeah, it resonated a lot. And this whole, also this whole narrative around change maker. I loved it. How she, you know, the point that you're saying, like how she's able to do all of those things. And then you ask her, so what is it that you do? How do you introduce yourself? And beautifully she goes, says, I'm a change maker. You know, as if nothing. <laughs> it was awesome. Um, But are we saying that people who build businesses who take take the kind of the jump into unknown that there is a change maker element in all of them is it something that you need to be able to to start a business to persevere in a difficult world i wish to hope so that you know like i'm i'm hopeful but often i feel that when i'm talking to people like that they feel that there is an like i'm naive because They said that there are many people out there who are starting their businesses still for very different reasons than to change the world for better. So in my world, in Vladi's world, the answer would be yes, because they are makers, creators, and the change is the driver. So I was thinking about Noah's episode when she was speaking about the deep motivation, right? That is mm. the power for making it uh, a success. I think I think we know people who start a business just because they want to get rich, which is fine. Uh, I think there's also people out there who, who want to do something because they don't want to die without leaving a mark. Mm. If that means change, if that falls into the change maker category, then I can totally follow that um, because that's the motivation for many people. Why that is, is a different story, but people just want to, to be remembered Legacy. for something. Yeah. 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 You remember how Layla said uh, that if there is one thing uh, I want to be remembered for is that when, she, you know, the thing that she trained her fellow advocates to through a breathing exercise. I thought mm. that was, that was hilarious and powerful at the same time. Um, did you ask yourself ever, yourself ever this question? Like, what do you want to be remembered for? Oh, pff, no. Um, It's a big question. Actually, Even yeah, it's a that's a question for people. Mm. That takes you, it takes you down all <laughs> sorts of different directions. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I know that, Jesus, no, I actually haven't told this through. I, I don't think it's the what, it's the how that mm. matters to me. Uh, I want people to feel like they had a nice experience with me, but I don't I don't think it's a what in particular. But this is where we're all different, right? What about you? I was asked this question about you remember we were recording actually, I think it was extra when I was in Islamabad and I was recording a podcast in the morning. And uh it was this this uh, entrepreneurial network in Pakistan and Out of nowhere, we're talking and she's just asking, she just asked me this question as if nothing. And you are, you know, sort of live on the podcast and you are, it's like this deep, really embedded something. And the, the, the way I answered was that I want to be remembered as a good friend and, you know, somebody that was there for people in the bad and the good. And I just said it out there because that was the first thing that I could connect mm. with emotionally. And then obviously, you know, afterwards, after the recording, you go back and you're like, oh my God, what did I say? But no, I mean, um, yeah, I think that resonates. Is the more the, I don't have a concrete thing like the one that Leila said, but, you know, I think she used it also. It was just part of the sort of conversation, yeah. but um For me, it was also a little bit more the how, right? As a, the type of a person and the type of sort of experience that you co-create for others together with you. So it was it was more in that space for me. Than, yeah. It was, I mean, I'll chat with Leila. For first of all, and maybe we weren't clear enough about this in the actual guest episode. She was sitting in Kenya at a beach with yep. the camera facing her, but her looking out onto the sea. So there was an element of, 
and there's bird song in the background right <laughs> throughout and you go i so want to be there i so wanted to be sitting next to her and having that conversation maybe with a nice glass of something in that right but um you, you have this conversation with somebody who's so sharp in talking about their experiences about their emotions about trauma about really hard bits and as you say but in such a kind of such a so, so easy way that you just follow the story but yeah. um Leila really touched upon a lot of the things that we care about in our wider context of our definition of entrepreneurship right um talking about learning talking about having somebody to take you under their wings when she was talking about the nurse yeah yeah, yeah. uh uh talking having somebody who practically mentors you encourages you supports you at the beginning of everything all the way through to also taking on really big jobs that you're not prepared for but going in with a certain confidence like the rectorship right yeah um with, with St Andrews University um there was a lot of stuff where you just go I want I want to be able to do this the way you do this you know yeah I had a similar feeling I sort of felt attracted to her in a different ways um the 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 bit around the support bra uh, was brilliant um i was feel, you know the inclusive bloody kicked and i was like well what's the other word you know <laughs> to so the guitarists can feel included or other listeners from a sport uh, it's not sport bra support bra um but the um, this the um, i was thinking about when you also s- said about the nurse and when she described i'm hiring people who are not going to be just you know the yes people yes ma'am people i i found that also very important and it was sort of like i was reflecting on our own team and our conversations and how we call each other out but we are there for each other in the difficult moments so um it was interesting when she said it as a solo founder i did reflect on that right so that sort of awareness that I don't have the luxury that for instance we have two of us in within the team and in the other teams as co-founders but you still actively go out there and hire people in your team core team that they can actually call you out I think that's a certainly a lesson um I was also thinking a lot about I uh, just coming back a little bit towards the the motivation when we ask her about the the driver for the movement right when she was actually describing the emotion as the key driver the anger again i was going back to the conversation with noah and that deep interest intrinsic motivation that you know it can be connected to your personal experience or simply the emotional connectivity the bond that can be so powerful uh, like an engine to you don't even know but you embark on this entrepreneurial journey um i was listening today in the morning uh, to another entrepreneur she's not with us anymore but she's one of my really i mean sort of role model and somebody i look up to leila jana i i wish we would have her on the podcast but not possible but uh she's the founder of uh, samosource and another um another business but sort of I'm bringing it up because she's she's been also a driver a major driver of a movement um lift helping people to be lifted up out of poverty um she was helping um in emerging markets uh to give work to people as a tool of enablement and self reliance um and I was listening to a podcast with her and she was using similar terminology and constructs and sort of the perspectives that I was thinking it was connecting back to Leila so I think there is a lot that systemic change agents and entrepreneurs are are sharing it was just it was really beautiful to hear it and and to listen to it and reflect on again how we can effectively drive a change for better health um within the world of entrepreneurs that was for me probably one of the biggest takeaways so whilst in the last week we had an email from one of our our listeners saying how every episode resonates a little bit with their personal experience um and 
for me, one of the things that I hope resonates with our listeners was when Leila was talking about the Dahlia project and the women that would come there and how important it was in this context to talk to other people who've been through the same journey. Mm. So the concept of peer support, right? So on the one side, as an individual, you need your own bra. <laughs> um, <laughs> but on the other side, part of that is having other people to talk about stuff. Uh, it's come through so many times now that we never really had a, a dedicated conversation about this. But for me, it was interesting to take this out of a completely different context and just go, maybe there's something very basic human here, which is all about talking to somebody who can relate to my experience is, is a good tool to process this. And it's not about having them make recommendations or give advice mm. or suggest solutions. Yeah. It's just about having this emotional yeah. connection that the person in the room with me has been there and we can just maybe just look at each other and be silent, but we know, and that already takes some, takes some of the pain away. Right. Yeah. And, and a lot of, a lot of the, the stuff in that journey is about pain <laughs> and how do you deal with it? Right. Yeah. No, that works. I mean, I, I can completely connect to that. Um, part of me always sort of takes a lens of um, reflecting on how does that shows up in my own life. Um, mm. And for instance, this element around peace, peer support, um, I think I could do better, particularly with people who are on a similar journey. Like I do feel that there are people who are my close dear friends that I can always go back to. And then I'm really grateful for you guys as co-founders. And so, so sort of that is my support bra when it comes to the peer group, but I'm not part of any of those, um, let's say entrepreneurial groups. And uh, I know there are many out there um, and I'm intrigued. You haven't given it a choice, uh, chance. What, no, what is it? Choice, chance. Just did not chance. try. <laughs> um, so yeah, maybe, maybe that's something, you know, as you started with your journaling, maybe that this is something that um, I can uh, try and then reflect, sort of bring it back to you guys and share how it is, how, how was the experience? I think, yeah. I think we sort of, maybe we, we, we know what we've enjoyed about Leila's episode. We have an idea about what our, our listeners enjoyed. Hopefully this, this chat was also a bit of a, of a trigger to go down different paths. Suddenly we talked about legacy. Wow, that was unexpected. <laughs> um, but it all fits fits in the same big bucket of stuff that goes on when you build a business, when you struggle with running a business, when you're thinking about leaving your business. Mm. <laughs> and wherever we are on the journey, again, I think it's uplifting to sort of remind ourselves that um, being a maker change maker, entrepreneur, it doesn't really matter, right? The box, it's, um, it's the intention, the motive and the journey and the people we do it with. Uh, amen. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Vladi. Have a wonderful weekend. You too, Nectarius. You too. You've been listening to Naked by the Future Farm where entrepreneurship is stripped to its vulnerable core. To learn more about our work, sign up to our newsletter or visit thefuturefarm.co, where you can also apply to be a Naked guest. Naked is produced by Dan Turgel and edited by Catherine Walker. And remember, subscribe, follow and rate Naked to help share it with the world.